The atlas, as you can see in the original art, is kind of standing on this burning rack. And I, for the longest time, I was thinking to myself whether I even wanted to replicate this. But unfortunately, at the end of the day, I realized that if I didn't have kind of a source of lighting directly underneath the atlas, it would be very difficult to kind of justify the positioning of all of this. Originally, I thought what I would do is I'll have the light source seem to be from outside. So what I was thinking of doing was airbrushing the front of my hands with the light to kind of indicate that the light source was in front of the atlas. But if that was the case, then unfortunately, what would actually happen would be that a lot of these areas in front would also be lit by the light. So I had to kind of pretty much plant a light source between its legs for the lighting to make sense. And for that, I had to do a little bit of green stuffing. So we're going to start the second part of this tutorial by painting the fire starting with Man of White Highlight to just kind of basically block in the light and then I follow this up with the Scarlet Red that I used for the OSL effect from last time that we spoke about this paint job. Now some of you are thinking to yourself, Professor, where's the yellow in my flame? And the answer is I kind of forgot. I forgot to paint the yellow. So of course, I will be coming back to this later with a yellow. So I just immediately add the red. I just blend it in a little bit because at this point, of course, I also want to ensure that the transition between the red to the missing yellow and the white is relatively smooth. So what you're seeing me do down here is while the paint is still wet, I just wet my brush and then I just go about it of just mixing it into the white. And of course, I also put a little bit of black on top of my flames to kind of represent the smoky parts. Remember that for flames, the parts that are the hottest are going to be the lightest color. So typically, that's going to be the closest part to the fuel source. In this case, of course, it's going to be the burning wreckage on the base. And again, because I wanted to make sure that the transition between the black and the other colors was smooth, I again wet my brush. And just with my wet brush, I kind of just push it around so that the black and the red parts mix well together. And now, of course, the yellow I'm using, Half Fire, is this beautiful orangey yellow. Oh, and putting it in the middle. By right, you're supposed to do the Half Fire first before doing the red, but yeah. So I just put it in, and then I, of course, do feather it a little bit. Now, painting the wreckage, I apologize in advance that this short part is going to be out of focus. But essentially, I was just trying to replicate the art on the cover. And now that it seemed like there was a wreckage at the base that was painted grey. So I started with Bastion Grey, followed by Trollblood Highlight just to kind of block in the colours. Of course, keeping in mind that since we know the light source is the flame, we can of course position the shadows. It's very important that we capture the shadow positioning and the light positioning very well. Basically, the places that are facing the fire will be more lit than the places that are facing away where there will be kind of a shadow cast on them. So in this case, for the shadow, I'm using Bastion Grey with a bit of black to get this kind of really dark grey. I could, of course, have used a pre-mixed color, but in my case, I was just like, ah, I'm just going to darken the base color myself. Of course, in between, I also used straight up black for some black lining to add a little bit of contrast to the model. And down here, what you're seeing me do is, again, just very quickly, kind of feathering in the blend so that it's a little bit smoother. I paint, you'll notice I'm painting all the areas that are facing away from the light in the darkest shade. And I apologize, you really can't see this very well, but yeah, this is just some white to add further highlights to the edges of the grey. I don't think that I sh I videotaped this, but I actually also did paint on the leopard spots as well, just using some black and of course some white. Now let's move back to the flame just very quickly. Now I noticed that I lost a little bit of redness in the flame, so I'm just going to be taking some bloody red in this case and just kind of mixing it into the, well, the recesses of the flame for as much as that makes sense, essentially just adding a little bit more red to my fire. And using the hard fire, which is the yellowish color that I mentioned earlier on, I will use this as the first highlight to my OSL that was airbrushed in the previous video. So please make sure you check that out if you haven't already. You see me just mix it in. Again, paying attention to where the light is 
in this case again the light source is coming from the bottom so that's something to keep in mind while doing the OSL of course later on I will also be adding some white some well but not white highlight really into this for an additional kind of edge highlight again focusing on the edges that are facing closest towards the flame last week of course or rather in my last video of course I mentioned that for this model we have to keep in mind that there are multiple different light sources coming in so these red flame based lights are going to be all painted according to the position of the fire and not of the main light luminescent source coming from the top or the front of the model so you can see kind of the positioning of where I'm highlighting the model sometimes yes like in that case in that very stroke I did go a little bit over but that's perfectly fine and now for all of this, the rest of it, I'm actually just painting on green. I'm using the same green that I used in the previous part, just adding a little bit more highlights. Yes, at a glance, it looks a little bit yellowish, but that's fine. So just kind of lining everything. Of course, sometimes people say that when you're working on this sort of panel lining, it'll be easier to paint at an angle, or rather painting with your brush at an angle. That's kind of true in some cases by models this small. I sometimes just come at it at a 90 degree angle like kind of what you're seeing right now where I just kind of paint it on from time to time. It really depends because sometimes there's just simply no place to put your brush at a 45 degree angle along the edge. So I'm using a fairly small brush just to add all of this and sometimes you see me adding some extra strokes as well simply because I also want to paint on a little bit more extra texture and some extra detail with this highlight to kind of represent a few scratches and scuffs here and there on the green armor paneling. So working very slowly this step, of course, uh, it takes a while because there are a lot of edges to highlight. And of course, for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to be showing everything because it's going to be really long if I did. Of course, I'm taking care not to work over or rather not to paint over the lilac areas with the green because I'm going to be touching those lilac areas now with essentially wolf grey. It's kind of like space wolf grey. The wording on the bottle has already kind of rubbed off, but it's fine. So you can kind of see that I'm highlighting the lilac areas with this color. And again, every once in a while, I'll add a few extra lines here and there to represent certain scratches and surface inconsistencies along the edges. So it's exactly the same process. There's not much to say down here. But yeah, and again, you can see just sometimes a few dabs here and there to give it kind of that extra feeling. The eyes are something that's going to be a little bit difficult to replicate simply because you can kind of see that there is this nice purplish hue sort of outline inside and of course the Atlas model is extremely tiny so even if I had kind of the most stable hands in the world the reality is that you probably wouldn't be able to see the full detail anyway but I still like the effect so let's try and replicate that a little bit so for these white parts or these light parts, I'm going to start with pure white and then I'm going to paint in violet red. So you can kind of see it's white base, violet red for the shadows. And you can kind of see the shape of the eyes is very small, but I did paint on the shape of the eyes. I'm going to cover this with Pamiyake red, thin down a little bit because if not, it's going to be a little bit too intense. And coming back, of course, to the green, I'm going to be using an even lighter shade of green, in this case, just all green camo and adding further highlights to the armor. So you'll notice that the, well, it's not really a trick, but really if you want armor panels that really stand out, you do have to have quite a number of shades and quite a number of highlights as well. The, the change in value, as some artists would call it, going from a very dark color, which in this case, our darkest color is technically black, and then going through all the way to a brighter and brighter, subsequently brighter green, is what gives you the contrast. And down here, I am working with Caspian Blue. I'm kind of painting on the black parts. As I mentioned in my previous video, I figured that I didn't want to do non-metallic metal. 
because I felt that these parts were probably meant to be black but with a bluish light sauce shining on them. So I'm using this Caspian blue and I'm feathering on the paint a little bit over the black to kind of get a better smoother transition. I talked quite a bit about feathering in my previous video, the one especially where I painted a Blood Bowl Elf, so you may want to check that out. So again, I'm just kind of working it on just very quickly. And then washing my brush and using my wet brush to kind of move the paint and blend the transitions a little bit smoothly. If you wanted to, of course, you could do layering and stuff, but this is, of course, a much faster, albeit a slightly cruder way of doing things, which is fine. Again, this is painted for gaming, not for a full display. So I just kind of want it quick. <laughs> So I did this for all the black parts. Including, of course, as you can see down here, a little bit of like the, the nuts and the radar dish, I guess, at the side. And of course, the AC-20 and the missile racks. Quite a lot of black parts on this model. Of course, the joints as well. So the big <laughs> screw-looking joint at the leg as well. And you can kind of see me feathering it further down here. Just to smooth the transition. If not, the jump from black to Caspian blue is actually quite extreme. And down here, big flat surface. So I put a fairly thick highlight. And then I immediately wash my brush and immediately blend it while the paint is still wet. Got to work fast. And the paint can't be too thin. If the paint is too thin, then it becomes a lot harder to do this kind of feathering. So of course, scale 75 paints are pretty thick. So I just put a tiny bit of war to thin it down a little bit, but I kept much of it relatively thick for this blending. Now continuing on this time, I'm using Bearing Blue. It's essentially a lighter shade of the previous Caspian Blue. I'm doing the same thing, but of course, in this case, I'm focusing on the areas that will catch the light. Not the OSL light from the fire, but rather the, the light source that's coming from the top, basically. Again, I'm feathering it in. I do the same thing for, of course, the AC-20, the radar dish. All the parts that were painted earlier on, I would do the same thing. You'll find very often that the nicest blacks are not really painted with black at all. Usually people use some sort of shade of blues, sometimes turquoises, sometimes even other colors. You'll be surprised. I have a tutorial coming up where I'm painting black with orange in it. So look forward to that. Sorry for the out of focus video, but I think everyone kind of gets the picture at this stage down here. Again, every subsequent highlight has to be narrower than the pre-existing highlight, just so that we don't cover up the previous color. I also work this on the heat sinks on the back of the leg. And you'll notice how I'm highlighting kind of the upper edge. And then the lower edge, I'm kind of doing it diagonally from each other. The highlights are diagonal to each other. As that helps kind of give a better look to it. And now moving on to Arctic Blue again. It's even lighter. It's it's almost Space Wolf Grey, honestly speaking. I could have probably used the same uh, one that I used for the Lilac earlier on. But it's fine, I'm using this now. In fact, because it's so similar to the highlight of the Lilac coloration, it kind of also does help tie the model together. Although it does make the Lilac highlights and the black highlights look different from each other. Just sufficiently slight to kind of give the impression that it's not exactly the same color. Again, just reinforcing the highlights. So you notice again, talking about values, 
we go from a straight black all the way up to this color this arctic blue is almost white when you think about it and that really helps sell the contrast one thing about the osl that i did in this paint job which i think could be changed is i could have increased the values that means made well it says made the fire brighter and made the area around the fire brighter in hindsight maybe i would do that in the future but for this paint job i did not because i think that the fire itself is not going to be as bright as the light source coming from the top which is either some sort of star or planet oh, sorry not planet but sun rather <laughs> or spotlight so as i mentioned in my previous video i figured that well it's not going to be as bright as that so yeah i didn't really push the light for the osl as bright as i should have so continuing on with the highlights of the black Essentially, I'm placing the highlights in the exact same location every time, just doing it in subsequently narrower areas. And you'll notice that this model also has a few things pointing at the back. If I recall correctly, one of the Atlas variants like has medium lasers pointing to the back. Maybe that's what those are. I'm not 100% certain. My Bellmaster had medium lasers pointing to the back. So yeah, not sure how many people like rear-facing lasers. But it's a thing in Belltech, especially in certain older designs, I guess. Because I heard way back when Max didn't have torso twists as part of the rules. I wasn't playing back then. So I can't really comment, but I guess it's kind of interesting. It's an artifact of the past. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to use somber gray with lilac. I'm going to be mixing this together to add the shades to the eyes. You'll notice in the original artwork that the shades to the eyes exist down there. It's basically the shadow. And of course, adding this really dark color next to the brightness of the red eyes really helps the eyes stand out even further so i'm also feathering this a little bit down because if you look at the original paint job also or rather the original painting you'll notice it kind of has this like weathered streaking pattern on the front of the face it's not a perfectly smooth white paint job i also want to replicate that and again of course i'm just using feathering to very quickly accomplish this If you want something bright to really stand out, paint the areas around the bright sauce with a darker color and it will of course make the bright parts stand out a lot more. If I wanted to really push it, I could add more black to this, but I chose not to. And continuing on, Arctic Blue with white, just for the final highlights around the eyes. When you look at the Atlas, you also find that there are a lot of these markings. You have these arrow marks, you have these white boxes. You have some words down here, which I think says Skull Jammer with a single L, whatever the case. And of course, you have things like this. So I wanted to replicate as many of those as possible on the model. I am not able to show them, or not rather not able to show me painting them simply because it's really, really fine. And the way that my camera is set up, I can't really see from a distance because I have to kind of stretch out my hands to record it. But suffice it to say that I have painted them on, as you will see. The Atlas also has these nice little chevrons. Quite a number of them, actually. And there are these little, tiny little black markings, which look like tags. Honestly, they look like they were kind of layered on top as an afterthought, because somehow they, they look like they stand out a little bit too much for me. But I'm still going to be using them anyway in my paint job, just for the sake of being authentic. Alright, so as you can see down here, I painted the triangles with just red. I used a brighter uh, red for the parts that are facing the light. I used a darker red for the parts that are facing away from the light. And you can kind of see I also used metal white highlight to paint on the boxes. The skull couldn't squeeze in the smaller words, so I just made some squiggles down there. 
of course, all these hazard stripes. I called them chevrons just now in the previous section. I don't know what's wrong with my brain, but sometimes that kind of thing happens. All right, so hazard stripes, very simple. Paint it black and then paint some yellow ticks in, inside and you get your hazard stripes. And of course, these small little framed looking things. I'm not sure what to call them, but yeah, I just painted those on as well. All these small little details, of course, help the model look more real. And of course, in this case, it looks like more like the painting, right? Of course, the symbol of the light horse down here. We're going to try and replicate that a little bit. It's going to be very slightly abstract if you look at it in detail. But as long as from a distance, you can kind of tell what it's supposed to be. That's totally fine. Yep, so in this case, I just used yellow, which is a bright, nice bright yellow painted on the triangle with black inside there. <laughs> and I put some blue, in this case, I'm using magic blue. And then I used basically white to just paint on the horse. Now, one other thing I couldn't really quite figure out were all of these black marks. You'll notice these black marks down here. Initially, I thought that maybe perhaps they were supposed to be scrapings. But if they were scrapings, then you would expect them to come from the edges, right? All the damage and wear and tear, you would expect it to come from the edges first, and they wouldn't be kind of sitting in the middle of the panels like this. Whereas at the same time, I was thinking to myself, well, if it was grime or, or watermarks and whatnot, you would expect it to be streaking down, streaking down kind of like down here, right? Where you can see it on the arms, you see it streaking down. Whereas you wouldn't necessarily see it like going across like this. This was a little bit curious for me. I'm not saying you can't get marks like this where it's kind of streaking across, but I just feel like more often than not, you will get this kind of vertical shape rather than anything else. And I kind of figured that I'll just combine both of it. What I mean by this is that in some places where it made sense, where I would imagine that there'll be water or streaking or anything flowing down basically, I would use this kind of streaking pattern like this. Whereas in some of the other areas where it's a little bit flat, and not too certain, I will just use all of these little black marks or these darker marks kind of just to break up the texture of the surface to make it seem a little bit more weathered, not so smooth and not so bright. So for this, I'm using Ardan Green with black. Of course, this is essentially the same color that I used earlier on for the green itself. I'm just adding this very slowly with a brush. This is a time-consuming process. In all honesty, it's a lot easier and a lot faster to do this kind of weathering on top of flat surfaces with oil paints. But I didn't have an oil of this color and I couldn't be bothered to go out and buy a color that I'm probably only going to be using for this one paint job. So I just decided, well, let's just use what I currently have. So using a very, very fine brush, I'm just kind of going in there and adding in those lines one panel at a time, line by line, as you saw. It's quite it's quite enjoyable, if I'm being honest. It was not at all tedious. It, it just takes a while, right? Because, of course, the enjoyment here is that they are all just abstract kind of shapes and dots. There was no need to be very tidy. In fact, the whole idea was not to be tidy. You know, they were just painting on all of these kind of natural, organic patterns. That's very nice, you know? Just add a little bit here and there. And essentially just leave it be very fun especially since i've been painting a lot of panel lining for this model it's very nice to just kind of paint random patterns doing of course flat surface modulation with oils is great fun i do have some thoughts about maybe doing this in the future for some especially armored fighting vehicle models but that will have to wait so anyway coming back to meloth white highlight so in this case I am going to be using it for a little bit of the areas that was painted for the OSL. Again, just adding a small little touch of brightness, thinking about where the flame is. You could, of course, do this a lot earlier, but I added this in at the very end, simply because by the time I realized that my OSL uh, wasn't too bright, or wasn't bright enough, it was already pretty late into the paint job, so you could have done it a little bit earlier. Here and there. And now I'm using Baharoth Blue, 
because if you look at your original painting you'll find that there is a very obvious turquoise light blue light source coming from the top so looking at where the light placements were in the original painting i painted on some of this bahara blue again it is kind of random it's kind of strange but it works because it provides this contrast between the orangey red bottom of the model and of course this really light blue turquoisey top on top of the model all right so that's basically the end product thank you all for watching these two videos again if this video has been helpful to any of you please do consider subscribing these videos really take a long time to produce and edit and whatnot so any sort of support will of course be much appreciated also please do check out my other social media links especially of course my instagram where i do post even some short tutorials down there from time to time as well as reels I tried one last week and i'll be doing more of that in the future so that's all thank you all and take care